I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just as sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. We'll just have to resync. Oh, look, I've got a waveform again. Let's resync real quick as an emergency. All right. So three, two, one. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to keep all that. I, I had a bad pop up. So we'll see how much yeah. of my stuff I get to keep uh, yeah. up until then. Um, so he- he- here's here's the thing. So my all of I just want you to know one that the raw files for Cryptopedia Cast far exceed the capacity of your your computer's hard drive. Oh, Brandon. So here's the thing. I have an external hard drive. Guess I, how big that one is. So so here I have an external SSD that I bought just for um, Cryptopedia that mm-hmm. is cheaper. Than my 500 um, HDD that I got in college for school. That, that was an okay. external plug-in. Yep. It was significantly cheaper. And it was two terabytes for not a lot of money. So I'm going to guess you have an external that's... I'm going to guess you probably um, got something that's maybe a name brand. So I might say you're going to be at like four terabyte capacity. Ten. Ten? And Brandon, Damn. Brandon, Brandon. Yes. Guess what else? Oh, no. It's not just 10 gigabytes, 10 ter- terabytes. It's 10 terabytes in RAID. I have two hard drives <laughs> in RAID. So, Brandon, my hard drive game is on point. It is. I I'm might, just a lazy fuck. I might have not. I, it, it might be older now, but I do have a RAID controller that I can just give you if you want, if I find it. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I have a. I have an external enclosure that has RAID built into it and oh, stuff like gotcha. that. Oh, gotcha. Um, basically, it was an arc. The reason I wanted that drive was for archi- archival purposes. Yeah. And like to store my digital games collection and movie collection. Yeah. Um. So then that way, if something bad happens to one drive, I can swap it out, rebuild the RAID, gotcha. and then swap out the other drive. So. Yeah. It. It's more of me preserving. Uh, anime that I downloaded in 2006 because I am a <laughs> good. data hoarder. Good. Mm-hmm. There's yeah, I got that RAID controller years ago for free. It was a very nice, very expensive one at the time. This would have been um um less than a decade ago, but not not much less. But um, I, I there was an IT person that had to throw a bunch of stuff out that was brand new. Like mm-hmm. raid controllers, <laughs> so I just got to tap on the shoulder. Like, hey, do you want like a free, um, very nice UPS and raid controller? And I was like, yes, yes, I do. Uh, I didn't. I didn't work desktop IT. I worked yeah. server level IT. So like, I never got any cool stuff uh. like that. The best I got was uh, little plastic caps that you put on top onto fiber optic cables. Nice. Which I have I have sitting in a bag in my backpack to this day with the intent of eventually turning them into little grave markers for a tabletop game. Because um, they kind of look vaguely like uh, Japanese style graves, you know, the like vertical ones yeah. that have like the vertical text and then the wide bases. I was just like, oh, I could totally like get some... Krylon stone paint and just oh, yeah. spray paint this and then write Japanese characters onto it or something yeah. like that. Um, and like do it poorly because I don't have any experience with Japanese characters, but you know, whatever. There's neither do most tattoo artists. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I saw a thing, uh, like, where they, I saw this like video of a tattoo reality show, and they called the the people canvases. Yeah, which like it felt very weird to me because it felt like very reductive yeah. towards the people, and like it, 
I don't know. That just was weird to me because it like it turned it objectified the person into a canvas, which is like. Or we talk about Ink Master for Ink Master. They they did that, but that's just because like yeah. the, that person wasn't getting a tattoo for them necessarily. It was they were it was for the artist to show off their skills under a set of constraints. So they really were just a canvas. It wasn't like the person had any significant input. Um, and on Why the, not just the, tattoo a pig? The thing of... Uh, because that takes the... Then it's not good for TV. Like, it's there's got to be, like, a level of risk on TV. Plus, then there's, like, the people get pissed off because their tattoo sucks, and they had, like, a whole episode of just, like, people coming back and confronting their tattoo artists. So, I... I well, th- I that's, like that. that's what I saw. That's what I saw, and why I was, like, oh. kind of upset about them being called canvases, because it was yeah. very, like... Now, there, there were some was... who, like, their canvas, to quote-unquote didn't like their idea so they were just like get out of here i'm gonna do it to myself and they gave did it to them their own bodies which, which is fine um to the to, to that and in, in, uh um uh characters and drawing ariana grande has a tattoo on her hand that uh says small barbecue grill did she know that it said small barbecue grill when she, she got did it? not good <laughs> good although i think ariana grande is like pretty infamous for her use of asian people as like props yeah she does that and she also did that thing where she like spit on food and it was like and said something about poor people in like a dunkin donuts Uh, what yeah she she like spit on donuts and so on and she's like whatever it's poor people or something like that uh ariana grant let's go ariana grant spit don't donut shop owner says Ariana Grande spit on merchandise. Yeah, uh, donut shop owner says Ariana Grande spit on merchandise. Uh, yeah, and she defended herself this, by saying it was for poor people or whatever. The singer tweeted an apology of sorts after the video went viral on social media. I am extremely proud to be an American. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so but she kind of earned the small barbecue grill. Uh, thing. Well, I mean, I think she earned it for uh, well, a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a there's an insider dot com, um, uh, talking about. Oh yeah, here it is on cultural appropriation and Ariana Grande's misspelled tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, people. Uh, this is this is what it is. Uh, people think uh, people is uh, appropriating blah, 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 Japanese culture for the aesthetic. Um, so. I mean, I'll, I'll say like they are cool characters. That's not bad. <laughs> other 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 cultures have cool looking things. That's true, but like also she's explicitly like using people as props which is um not, not good. great yeah yeah that's kind of like a major theme in the last episode where i was screaming for like you know two hours oh yeah 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 that was a fun one yeah that, well oh so let me just say this isn't just a show about uh technical difficulties uh and ariana hard, grande hard drives and ariana grande terrible. and small barbecue grills it's uh, it's Cryptopedia. It's an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. And each week, we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And uh, I'm I'm not gonna. We're not gonna play the guessing game because this week I'm gonna do another. Um, uh, give me mixed. Give bag. me like. Give me like something adjacent i just want a guess i want to guess once, you want to guess okay least. okay okay we'll do a um i'll say a water-based cryptid that's okay. based on the western coast um along the borders of, of the u.s the u.s and mexico so like a southwestern uh water the, it will be the first one Oh um, my god, I think I actually know what this one it, is, but I don't know the name of it. Relatively modern. I don't I think I've heard of this one, but I don't know its name. Alright, I will Fuck. tell you it as soon as I get back into Google Drive. Oh yeah, I remember what it is, but I want to actually put the folder in the right location. 
moved. Do to. you actually remember? Do you actually remember what it is? Brandon? I, I do. Do you want me to tell you what it is before it's in the? Well, I can't now because it was put in there. But we're talking about El Demonio Negro or the Black Demon is going to be the first one. Okay. Yes. The Black Demon. The Black Demon. Um, now it's a shark that witnesses estimate to be from twenty to sixty feet in length. Um, which, for some context, is about um, a great white shark to a megalodon in length. So there's some swing to how big this bad boy could be. Um, huh. The shark's skin is very dark, and it's said to be extremely aggressive, and, that, and that's kind of what its name is attributed to. Um, it, its behavior is sort of the opposite of, like, dive bombing if you're in a plane, meaning that it will come to the surface very quickly and then just dive right back down pretty deep. Um, that... Um. Now I don't know if that, that's that's atypical that's not for how, sharks. I I don't think that's, they, but they they change depth a lot for tackiness. Um, but like at like, least not to the the significance that they're implying. Well, I'm I'm thinking about it from the perspective of like, does does like the dissolved oxygen in their bloodstream change at all, or like? I guess it's different because they have gills, but like I'm just thinking about it from the perspective of like uh, now. Now this is something that I'm thinking of that I have literally never thought of before in my life. Can do sharks sea get animals, the bends? Do sea animals get the bends? I don't know. I've actually never like, thought about that. I know um, they, they live in like specific ranges. Yeah. Well, that's well. You know, like the blobfish, right? Yeah. Um, that's not what the blobfish looks like. No, it looks um, like just a regular fucked up monster fish until it comes surfaces, and then it's a blob and then fucked it, up monster fish. Then it's a blob. How do marine mammals avoid the bends? Uh, deep diving whales and other marine mammals can get the bends. Oh, all right. Um, do do do. Their lungs compress. Do sharks get the bends? Here we go. Now, for some of them, I think they it's don't... like a, a pressure over time thing where they. If they rise too okay. quickly, that it becomes okay. An issue. So it, it only is a problem for things that can breathe oxygen. Okay. Um, because because the way that sharks get their oxygen is by diffusing diffusion through their gills, whereas a sea uh, like a uh, a seal, a dolphin, or a whale would get their oxygen through, you know, breathing. if they breathe through a mouth or a blowhole, then it's more of a risk than if they are primarily yeah. breathe through gills okay but but they also have adaptations that make it less likely okay look at us sounding all professional and shit holy cow all right um so so the C series monster quest even started looking uh for the the black demon in the sea of cortez uh which spans the western california mexico region in 2008 Eric Mack, who's a fisherman, was on the Sea of Cortez heading to a fishing tournament, and he decided to cross it um, rather than, like, l go around it because the Sea of Cortez is kind of like a horseshoe shape. So instead of hugging the shoreline, he was like, I'm just going to straight line right across it. Um, something... You mean the, 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 the coast of the Sea of Cortez was a horseshoe shape? Yeah, so in that picture, okay. it's that, um, that there's the it's... little, like, dew claw hanging off the, the bottom of the so... U.S. Mexico. I hate to be this person on the podcast, but I don't see the picture because it's not in the thing. I sent you a message and I was trying to keep it. I was trying to hide how the sausage gets made. Oh, but... I oh you know I've got you full screen. So here's letting other people know that how, how really how much it gets made. Um, I'll just put that right in. <gasps> uh, it's not working. Let's Google Sea of Cortez. Look at this on the fly. Who's professional? We are baby. I, I looked it up. I I already know what the Sea of Cortez is. I what I'm saying is the I I am going to need that in the drive because we do release these scripts. Yes. Well, I see in mine. So what you see on yours? Um, I don't know. But I, don't I know. also have. Let's let's keep going. I'll figure it out. What's what do you? What just just keep going. I'll figure it out. This is this is Aha. this is bad. Bad audio. This is just bad audio. Oh, they knew what they were getting into when they uh, tuned in. Did do they? Because like, what if this is somebody's first episode? Um. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> whoops. Um, yeah, definitely. A, that's a big oops. Yeah. There we go. So I just put it in. 
Uh, okay. uh, let's just see. Just keep going. Just, yep. just, just keep going. Just keep we're going. going. We're, we're going. Brandon, about this is our ninety. <laughs> this is our ninety third episode. Oh, holy Brandon. cow! Look at us and how professional well, we've gotten. Um, technically the ninety second, but yeah. that's a whole other thing. Anyway, he was crossing the Sea of Cortez. And uh, something slammed into his boat, damaging the motor. And what he claims to have seen was the tip of a tail whip around about five feet out of the water before diving straight back down. Um, now, a local diver thinks it may possibly be a misidentification of a whale shark, which I checked and they are known to be in the area. Um, it's the largest fish species in the world. However, the larger whale sharks are only half the size of the black demon, the largest being 46 feet compared to the black demon's 60 feet. And they also move mm-hmm. rather slowly. Um, something that's not a feature of the black demon. Uh, the well, sea- well hmm? but like also are they, how are they, what are, how are they gauging the size of the black demon, by the way? Cause like, do they have points of reference for the size or My is it guess like, is because he, I, so he's claiming it rammed into his boat when he saw okay. the tail fin. So it's, it's a such, so, it's close enough where he could use his own body as like an estimation. If he's like, okay, I'm okay, six okay. foot. That's a little bit shorter than me, maybe five feet. And and what was the size of it again? You said it was somewhere between a great shark and a megalodon. That's yeah. It's between th- that's uh twenty to sixty feet, depending on who you're asking. That's very broad, like in terms of range. Oh yeah, I gotta say, like. Those but then again, I'm, like, I'm gonna guess that range comes from people seeing something not up close, where they are looking out into the water and there's nothing for reference. So, so how big did the guy who got rammed say it was? He said it had a five foot long tail, um, the part that came out that's, of the water at least. That's that's closer. I feel like that's closer to like a great white then. Yeah, I, I think the tail. If you cut it into like thirds, you've got like tail, body, front bit, then maybe like thirty feet. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the the Sea of Cortez is is roughly twelve thousand feet deep in its um uh, deeper portions, similar to uh the area where it was discovered in Japan in two thousand seven. Um, it is, however, um important to note that the frilled shark. By oh, also I, I forgot to mention I'm talking about frilled sharks now because someone guessed well it said well maybe it's a weird old frilled shark that got over there, um. Uh, that the frilled shark was known to be an existing shark species. It just wasn't new to Japan. So people were saying like it's a new type of shark being discovered. It, it, um, Japan? Th- they're not really there. Yeah. So we're, how is Japan? How is okay? So how how does Japan enter this story? Other than the fact that we're talking about uh, gotcha. Ariana Grande. So, so there are some arguments that people were uh, making, saying that um, it's not crazy for a new species of shark to be discovered because the frill shark was discovered in 2007. Okay, okay, okay. But but that's a little bit of a um uh uh not necessarily true because we knew if the frill shark was existed, we just didn't know it existed in that region. Um, okay. Well, I mean, that's yeah, I, I but like also that's a very um like that that as an excuse is something that uh uh that like is terrible in a sense um but like actually no what am i trying to say like i'm saying i'm completely messed up now cuz yep. that's not correct at all that's that's perfectly normal actually that's yeah. correct that is a correct statement that they're saying mm-hmm. because like yeah, it could literally just be a shark that they don't usually see there. It like, could be a shark that's new to the area, but not a new shark altogether. Yeah, and the implication is that it's a new shark altogether. Is uh, uh, the way the argument seems to be coming across from these people. But like this, is some you, what you're describing is a megafauna kind of. Yeah, not quite, but like I think I it, it, it's it's not just like of color morph. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Yep. So what Monster Quest did is they set out with divers, boats, and planes and searched for the shark. And uh, boy, do I wish I had History Channel's budget. Because um, they sent out a lot of a lot of vehicles with people on them. Um, I don't think they understand um, words, however. 
The area they are searching is both remote and never traveled, but also has the highest density of reported sightings for uh, this creature. So Wait, what? So they sent out a bunch of search vehicles to an area that they are claiming is uh, remote and never traveled. However, it has the highest density of reported sightings of the black demon. And I would like, uh-huh. like to think those two things are pretty much mutually exclusive. They're, they they absolutely are. They absolutely are. Um, w- words be hard sometimes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm dying. The name... So I, I just finally saw the, the the copy appear in the folder and it's called Baja Beast. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there there's oh, there's a theme to my grab bag. <laughs> so does it so does it come with uh does it come with a Crunchwrap Supreme, or does it come with a BV5 layer? Because, like, that's going to matter to my decision. Uh, the, like, the correct answer, and the only correct answer, and also, uh, when I was in college, there like there was the test of what's your your um, o- your, your um, uh, uh, Taco Bell go-to order. And the correct answer, for at least the uh, industrial uh, technologies group, uh, uh-huh. for a number of us, was uh, number seven Baja Blast, which is the chicken quesadilla with a Baja Blast. So for me, it's a beefy five layer burrito. Good choice. Um, a cheesy gordita crunch, and a Baja Blast. Okay. Which with the with the phone app, uh, you can get for five bucks. Oh, nice! And that's why I put on weight recently. I learned something called sympathy weight, and that's the excuse I'm using. For us both looking like we're in our second trimester. God. <laughs> I ran out of excuses to, to stop exercising outside, though. I'm. I, I, it's been two weeks since my last shot. So I'm fully... I'm hard for exercise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're also fully vaccinated now, so... Yeah, I like that. That is my last excuse to, to be lazy and the weather's nice. Um... They also claim that the shark eats sea lions whole multiple times um, since one has never so, been. Yeah. I know that what you mean is the shark has been seen multiple times eating sea lions. However, the way that's, stru- that's structured makes me imagine the shark eating a sea lion whole, vomiting it out, then eating it again. Oh, no, so multiple times in the show, they said, the, the black demon eats sea lions whole. And I also, that's another statement I have issues with. Um, yeah. Since no one's ever been found, the stomach contents can't be checked. So if they eat the sea lion whole, there's no evidence that that ever happened. Yeah, that's that's kind of weird. That's like me- Also... Uh, <laughs> also, eating a sea lion whole, like, you know how big sea lions are? Do you know how big the black demon is? Uh, no, twenty because to no 60 one's feet. like. But but. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> Brandon, I yeah. just. Like, I know how big a sea lion is, but I don't know how big the black demon is. Mm-hmm. Also, like. I feel like there was something that was 60 feet. Like, great whites are spotted quickly. Yeah. Right? Like, when they're there. Mm-hmm. I feel like something that was on the scale of a great white in... Now, the Sea of Cortez, to my knowledge, is a fairly, like, hopping harbor. Because it's, it's a yeah. harbor, right? Yeah. So, like, you can do a shit ton of fishing in, like, low risk. And, oh, yeah. like, pearl diving is a thing. And, like, it's not exactly, to my knowledge, um, in my memory from social studies, I don't think that the Sea of Cortez is, like, it's not exactly remote, is what I'm trying to say. No, no. Some would say it's in, like, if you look at where it's located on a map, an extremely popular spot. Yeah. Yeah. Um. 
so they they did uh send some divers into the sea to search for this creature but before diving they made sure to point out that they are not in any way swimming in water where sharks will be out of safety concerns but so so they they I keep but, finding these little flaws in their plan you know wait but like why what so so they're searching for a shark but out of safety concerns, they will not be searching for the shark in areas where sharks do be hanging out. So there's there's some definitely some flaws in their game plan. Um, what? Yeah. It, it, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, like if it's a. What's okay? Like, I need to know what the rationale for that is. Like. Because I get not wanting to get bit by a shark, right? Yeah. But if you think that you're looking for this, what is it, the black demon? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're thinking you're looking for this this demon shark, right? Like, isn't that worse than a regular shark? Because usually a regular shark won't even fuck with you. Like, yeah. unless you're, unless it's hungry and it views you as a f- source of food, yeah. like, a regular shark is just going to ignore you. Yeah. Right? I'm pretty sure. Because, like, most shark attacks are misidentification things for the shark. Yeah. Where they think you're a they think you're a seal or something along those lines. Something mm-hmm. they, they predate. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, 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 this is all just so they could have TV shots of people swimming in water. Much of this episode is just for TV. Um like the when they drove past sea lions on a group of large power boats, uh, they make sure to point out that something mysterious has been spooking the animals because they started running away. Now I suspect that mysterious what? thing is Wait. power boats. Um, yeah, ah, uh, if I had to guess, that would be the correct answer. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, they they found nothing, John. These group of very loud power boats in not shark places found nothing. Um, however, they did get one brownie point, um, because Megalodon teeth found by the HMS Challenger in the South Pacific. So this is going to like, people are saying that it might be Megalodon, the, the black demon. Um, so in the 1870s, um, they've been scientifically dated to be only some 10,000 years old. Something many people claim Megalodon, uh, uh, they use that to claim it might still be alive because 10,000 years isn't that far gone in the past but however but like, they, they got they get brownie points for this because they they said that but then they also um said that they they took them to a museum the museum of natural history to be uh examined and they pointed out that not only is the nitrogen level in the tooth too low to test meaning it's extremely old much older than the original test um but the, it was inherently flawed, the original test that people are pointing out. So they, they did debunk the Megalodon thing. Because, like, I know that the ocean's big, right? And I know I know that people are like, oh, but the coelacanth, right? Yeah. Like, that's, that's the go-to. Oh, the coelacanth for literally anything yeah. involving, like, cryptids in the ocean is... But coelacanth! Um, so... Coelacanth, I don't think, is really that, like, in terms of size, it's 120 pounds, right? Yeah, the coelacanth um, isn't, I mean, it's big for me. If I was fishing, it'd be big, but it's, it's not about, like, big. It's about, like, it's human size. It's, like, yeah. a, about the size of a human, Yeah. right? So, like, that's, like, that's big, but on the scale of the ocean, that's small, Yeah. right? Yeah. But, like, a megalodon, like, the size of that creature is, lar- like, I, like, wouldn't we know about that? Because, like, I feel like we'd hunt so it. It's so big they started its name with Mega. Like <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I just, but, like, I just feel like we would have hunted that out of existence. Like, we did some Oh, else. yeah, that's a good point. Right? Because, like, you have to consider the fact that, like, whaling was and still is a thing yeah right so like like i feel like megalodon would have been found because like it's on the scale of a whale 
Yeah. Right? Um, I think. I don't know. Let me see. It's bigger. The scale chart. I think Megalodon's bigger. Bigger than... Uh, yeah. So, yeah. like... Yeah, it's 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 literally sixty feet, like like you said, um, which is which is pretty big. Yeah, it's approximately sixty feet. It's fucking huge. Yeah. Um, and like, there's whales that are smaller than that that we hunted. Yeah. So like, and like, I know, I know that whales have to breach in a megalodon wouldn't have to breach, but still, like. We would have, s- we would have seen it right if we know about like the Greenland I, shark, right? The Greenland shark being a, a shark that yeah. like, you, isn't really in areas. I, I believe that like it gets accidentally caught frequently. It doesn't. It's not super aggressive. It doesn't hang near the surface. It's like yeah. a hard to find shark, and we really know about that shark. So something like the, yeah. this, we, we would definitely know about. Um, yeah, and that's like the largest living species of shark too. Yeah. Um, so, like, uh, yeah, I mean, they were known to the, they were known to the, in, the Inuit people. So, like, I, I just, I don't know. For me, this is, this is hard to believe, because, like, we as a species are really, really fucking good at just killing everything that exists. Yeah. but And, like, something that looks like this, we would have killed dead. Yeah, so there there is a theory on why we might not have found it, and that's because it, it may be very local to a one very specific region. Um, but it, then it wouldn't be able... Like, I don't think it would be able to survive. Yeah, so it, it, it like, might have at some that scale. help. So there's an idea that popped up a few times while I was looking at this cryptid, and that it's somehow related to a secret underwater alien base that is located in the Gulf of California. Uh, well, you didn't explain that first. You buried the lead. Yeah. N- nothing specific, just that there is an ancient alien base and a big shark. Coincidence? Absolutely not. The aliens are taking care of the shark and ensuring its longevity, and in, 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 you know, they're providing everything it needs to survive and sustain itself, including maybe, like, a mate they keep in a cage so there's a breeding population. It, the, it's it's wait, flawless keep, thought. Wait, why... Wait, why would they keep the mate in a cage? Um, to why would keep, they? Why would they? To keep the horny shark why, close to the base. Why? Wait. Wh- they have to keep the black demon close because the black demon's a guard dog for the alien base. But like, it's an what? alien guard dog. But why? Because the best thing to guard your secret alien underwater base is a horny shark. But, like, I also, I'm looking at articles about this base, and it looks like it's related to Google Earth that someone found it. Yeah. Which, it also could be, like... Oh, it could be a lot of things, or just an artifact. Yeah, that's the thing I'm thinking, like, because... So, I talk about this. I I did, I recently did a talk about uh, Locative Media, and, like... Maps are dangerous. And that sounds weird, but maps are very dangerous because people take maps to be authoritative, right? Like, if you look at Google Maps, Brandon, like, just, you're looking at Google Maps. Yeah. You're trying to find a place to eat. You're new to the area. You got a list of things, right? On Google Maps or whatever you're looking at. Do you, like, like, if you're just looking for something to eat quick, you don't think about the fact that there's probably other stuff. No. Right? So, like, your brain is like, oh, this is what exists in this area. Oh, right? yeah. Right? Like, I'm not going to go out of my way to find different stuff. These are my options. I'm going to pick the one that looks best to me. Right? So, this is, this is like, not quite related to this, but it's similar in that, Maps make pe- people put so much authority into maps, but maps are frequently abstractions and sometimes wrong. There's uh, maps are are, are are abstractions, but maps are also or could potentially be depending on how you use them, limiting the the scope of your environment. Meaning that if you type in any country and then the word food into Google, 
the first or one of the first autocompletes will be near me. So you're gonna, like, if you type in Mexican yeah. food, it'll autocomplete Mexican food near me. So it'll just automatically, like, reduce the scope of your world to just these points in space. Well, yeah, and then also layering on top of that, there's a whole other thing um, where, like, kind of similarly, uh, if you're in a country that has a contended border... It'll show whatever your country's stance is on that border oh. and not show what the, like, it won't show that it's disputed. It will show that, like, oh, my country owns this. And then if you yeah. go to the other country and you're looking at it from there, it's like, oh, my country owns this. Yeah. Yeah, it's... But but that being said, this is probably not a secret alien base. It no. looks like um, I'm, I'm seeing, a, like, fault line, sort of. Yeah. And then, like, a few pieces of like uh just geologic activity that are coming together like plate level stuff yeah so yeah i don't yep. okay that's i still don't understand why aliens who have sufficient technology to keep a megalodon not only alive but like one of them caged maybe it's like the we alien a mega- version of Mike Tyson, right? So if they're underwater, they can't get a tiger, so they got a shark. Well, but Mike Tyson likes likes pigeons. This is not yeah. a pigeon. No. Now, if the Black Demon was a pigeon, that would be fucking wild. That would be amazing. Just a crazy, aggressive pigeon that's just black. <laughs> Terrorizing a small town. Oh, we need to make a Kickstarter for that movie. Um... So that, that that wraps up our first of the Baja Beasts. The second is the Lone Pine Mountain Devil. The Devil, or Devils, as uh, there's supposed to be many of them, uh, are large bat-like uh, creatures with big old fangs. Um, much like the Black Demon, they roam the Southern California uh, and Northern Mexico border. Uh, the, the cool well, thing... I'm about- going to have to delete this episode. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, did he do a whole episode on the Lone Pine Mountain Devil? No, this is this is a very like okay. So, um, this episode I started working on December eighteenth, twenty eighteen. Oh wow! Oh, that's and years. I never, I never made any 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 progress on it. I just was like, oh, I know this. Yeah, there, there's so, there's not a lot yeah. on it. That's why it was in a no. Group that's of why three. that's why I stopped. That's yeah. why I stopped working on it. That's yeah. This is me. T- checking off, grouping together things that smaller cryptids, as far as the amount of work out there on them, it, like grouping them together to, to get them off yeah. my list. Uh, All right, let's 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 go then. The cool thing about these creatures is that they uh, only attack your face and your torso, leaving behind a mutilated uh, uh, carcass. Uh, some hmm. people have speculated that the Lone Pine Mountain Devil is related to the Pine Barren Jersey Devil. Um, Something that I will point out is a falsehood. Um, we have yet yeah. to do a Jersey Devil episode, but I assure I'm you, on one. the listeners, that the Jersey Devil has a well-documented history and origin, and I can confidently state that they have nothing to do with each other. Uh, oh, 100%. 100%. We actually know exactly how the Jersey Devil story came into being. Yeah. Which is... Like, it's kind of like Slenderman in that regard, where we, like, know exactly where this piece of folklore came into existence. Because yeah. it's all documented. Like, literally. Very well. It is all documented. And by one of the most prolific individuals in early American history. Yeah. So, like, Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I uh, see. I think the only reason we didn't do the haven't done the Jersey Devil yet is we both know it's Buck Wild, but we also know about it. I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading a book by somebody who I'm Twitter friends with. Yeah. Um, and I've just been kind of taking notes on it. Like it's one of those things that I've been doing on the side. Yeah. Uh, like I'll pick it up every couple weeks and read a little bit more. Mm. Um, but it's. It's a story. I might go to the... I, maybe I'll go to the Pine Barrens when I do it. <laughs> okay. That's a plan. Uh, yeah, uh, the Pine Barrens are terrible, though, so who cares? Yeah, but they're in Jersey, and you like Jersey. I don't... I don't... Listen. Listen. Did I tell the story about how, like, apparently I'm, like, 
weirdly tied. I, I think I mentioned the fact that I'm weirdly tied to Jersey on this podcast multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. That's a state <laughs> of all the states. It's one of them. It is one of them. Uh, uh, I have my personal history is uh, kind of inextricably, inexplicably tied to uh, Action Park, by the way. <laughs> Which I believe I've told you. I don't I know. know if I'm fully. You, you didn't tell everybody. You told me. <laughs> I'm not comfortable revealing my origin story, but it has something to do with Action Park. And it and it does explain a lot about your trajectory in life. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, uh, yeah. especially my trajectory towards Jersey. Yeah. Um. But anywho, it, it's it's the gravitational pull of which the John orbits. Um, it's like it's like salmon. Yeah, it's like bit. salmon a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a little a bit lot. like no, salmon. It's a, it's a lot like salmon. <laughs> it's a little bit like salmon. It's a little bit like salmon. No, it's not a hundred percent because salmon are born in the stream. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say on the subject. Uh, a theme around the devil is that uh, it's some sort of nature guardian attacking those who harm its habitat, wildlife, or its own existence. Stories of the devil began to make their rounds in the 1800s. People migrating to the newly uh, settled, in quotes, land were found with their faces missing and torsos ravaged and generally not looking so hot. Uh... The most widely circulated account of the devil was the 1878 tale of Father Justice Martinez. He had been traveling in a wagon train with a group of Spanish settlers, numbering 37 in total, and they had apparently gone missing, not having met their contacts when they were supposed to. Uh, Their rotting, mutilated bodies found in the Sierra Nevada Mountains uh, by a group of copper miners. Justice Martinez had somehow survived, uh, being a few weeks... uh, like he survived a few weeks out with no supplies yeah yeah just the clothes on his back and a journal he kept he hiked 110 miles to a mission uh it was unnamed in his journal but some speculate it was the san gabriel archangel uh located north of san diego and upon arrival it was found that father martinez had taken a vow of silence after he had come upon quote beasts damned by the good lord unquote that seems convenient it seems very convenient, and it's a good thing he kept a journal. Um, yeah. His journal detailed some of what happened. He recalled uh, a celebration one night to, uh, in honor of St. Roderick. I wrote faint for the... And look at that. Patrons, I corrected some spelling. Uh, who was made a saint after he was killed for not changing his religion to another one. He called the celebration okay. a riotous orgy. Uh, with what? The... <laughs> what? Wait, What? <laughs> He so he had a brother who was a different religion than him, and he was like, ah, I'm going to no. kill you if you don't convert. And he was like, nah, yeah, and then his brother no. killed him, and he's a saint. Th- that's not the part I'm getting. It's the part that's a riotous orgy. I'm just saying settlers know how to party. I guess. Uh, with the group, uh, he was traveling with burning trees for light and heat. Uh, Martinez staying the most fuck? of the time hiding away in a little tent on the outer edge of the uh, encampment. Uh, there's a lot of like sex and booze. It sounds like for the, from their their party. Um, sounds fun. Sounds like they knew how to party. It's booze in the woods is the way to party. At least growing up, that's the way you do it. Um, it was after uh, the burning of trees he witnessed, quote, winged demons swarm and attack the group of settlers, rav- ravaging men and women and children alike. Uh, his oh, last journal they, entry wait, was... Oh, no. Huh? Were they orgying around kids? Oh, no. No, that is not how you party. <laughs> I redact. I officially redact that prior statement. Yeah. Don't orgy yeah. around the kids. Also, don't get, like, blackout uh, His last journal entry read... Yeah, don't do that. There's a lot. You know what? Just don't do most things around the kids. Don't do... Try to avoid doing stuff that some people would consider cool around kids. Yeah. Don't... Unless that thing is... Unless... All right. Try not to do things that are considered cool to do not around kids. Around kids. But just be chill around kids and don't do like any like there's a lot of things you shouldn't do around children yeah if, if you think if you have to think should i do this near this kid 
The answer is almost definitely no. <laughs> like, in general, if you have to take a second to ask the question, there's going to be kids here, should I do this? The answer's no. Because if you pause for a second to ask that question, no. That's I find a good rule of thumb for a lot of things. Like, if you have to ask a question about it, the answer's no. Yes, like if the, usually. If you ever think, should I do a thing? The answer to the th- is ju- already no. Because Probably. that thought came into the noodle. And when the thought's in the noodle, don't do. So, well, yeah, because you, you took a second to be like, this might be socially unacceptable or morally un- unacceptable or something unacceptable. Yeah, just don't. Like, there's a, part of, there's a part of you that innately knew there was something inherently unacceptable about the thing you're about to do. So don't do it. Yeah, that's straightforward. Uh, so his last journal entry read, My God, my God, they're all gone. The winged demons have risen. What sin they have committed against each other and thy sacred earth. May the forgiving Lord not abandon their souls, which were taken from them into the depths of hell. And though the earthly fires of man and a soul tree remained on the mountain's peak, and the devils spared me, uh, returned to the refugee of Lone Pine, the mountain. Um, now... Now that we conclude the, the story of Father Martinez, um, there are actually no news articles written about this, um, and one other uh, one of the so yeah, I do want to take a second. Yes. So I did, like I said, I did do research on this cryptid. Yeah. Oh, do you already know the thing that I'm, the the thing that I was going to no, drop on you? Oh, okay. I don't know the thing you're about to drop on me because I was doing. I, this was back when I was doing more like long form, deep investigative stuff before I realized that that's an unsustainable model. Yeah. Um, and so I was digging deep on this. I was going through archive.org. I was going through newspapers from the time. Um, and yes, you're correct. There are no news articles written about it. Yep. But more importantly, there's no record that Father Martinez ever existed outside of this story. Yeah, this is a sto- one of the stories that we find that is constantly regurgitated with no proof. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is an I- internet urban legend. Yeah. Because it doesn't exist. Like, the fact that it doesn't exist in any cryptid books before the invention of the internet usually is evidence to me and like they have no primary yeah. sources to back this up like like the fact that i can't even read his entire journal is a problem yeah so in this story so i'm going to it's there's no hard evidence but i will half allude to the potential origin of father Mar- justice martinez okay um, interestingly enough, if you search for the Lone Pine Mountain Devil sightings on Google, you'll come across a video called Mountain Devil Prank Fails Horribly. Um, in this video, some guys play a prank on their friends. They get into a car, they drive into the woods, they have a guy jump out of a costume. Um, and shortly after this, they're attacked by a, a pretty realistic looking monster on camera. And I've All provided right, me, some links. Um, Give me a second. Yep, I'll let you hit play. Okay, so this is this is I I recognize this video style immediately. Do you? Yeah. You 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 should. Um so it's just some guys. You could probably skip to like halfway through the video too cuz it's just them in a car talking shit for the first half. So um, he's talking about the Lone Pine Mountain Devil for the first time like on 11 years ago. Mhm. Um Black and white. They're doing a night vision thing. Chad is the name of the character. They almost hit a man in a dumb costume. Yep. Um, let me check out this monster. Okay. He's like, he's like being an asshole. Yep. <laughs> the... The the joke monster actually spooked me for a split second. <laughs> that looks like a dildo on his nose. It does. Okay. Um What's happening now? This is something. Okay. They hear noises. Chad's disappeared. And black black 
Night vision, night vision. This is not very good, compelling audio so far. No. The, the, um, the point of the video it, it, it is you don't really have to watch um, I'm watching, no, Brandon, all the way through to understand it. Oh, it's a short video, too. Yeah, I know, yeah. but, like, it's three minutes long. So, it's very clear. So, I read ahead, but it's also very clearly the people who made VHS. Yes. Um, so, so, without a doubt. Like, this visually is matches one-to-one -one with VHS's visual style. Yes. Particularly the interstitial bits. Yeah, so the interesting thing about this video is that um, it does have an IMDb page. The video is three minutes long, and if you watch it, you might find that it feels oddly familiar, and that's because one of the people in it is Chad Vil uh, Vilia. Uh, the name may not be familiar, but he was an actor and director and producer of the feature VHS. And something interesting is if you start looking into VHS and the people involved with it, you'll find that one Justin Martinez is a producer, director, and writer, and visual effects artist involved with the VHS uh, franchise. And is also very closely named to the priest uh, of the so persistently copy and pasted article of the Lone Pine Mountain Devil. Brandon. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> no, he did. Are I, you? F I couldn't find are anything you of him outright saying yes. I wrote that, but like, are are <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? The the VHS guys have a habit of naming the characters in their series after themselves. Chad being Chad in the prank video, and Justin Martinez, the director, writer, producer, and VFX artist being very similar names to Justice Martinez from this kind of well-circulated article. <laughs> okay, okay. So, I'm looking at fandom article, wiki articles right now. Yeah. Um, first of all, the, pic the drawing of the Lone Pine Mountain Devil on this is literally identical to the, the thing that was in the video. Yeah. Like, literally identical. Literally, like, one-to-one -one identical. Um, and everything that I'm finding <laughs> only existed after this video was made. <laughs> Brandon. Mm hmm Brandon. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Yup. <laughs> so that's the bomb. <laughs> oh, your face is perfect. So apparently, okay, so Wikipedia says it was based on an urban legend. But like... I literally can't find any evidence of it existing before 2010. There's there's a whole lot of coincidences, coincidences, and nothing to really discredit the the train of thought once you start following those. So there's there's nothing that outright states he wrote it, but there's a whole lot that makes you go, huh? I think he's responsible for it. Yep. I hate this. <laughs> but I also love it. Right? It's pretty great. See, this is the re this this right here. This right here is why even though I want to make jokes about cryptids, I don't actually want to do it because then stuff like this happens. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. It's... Uh, I fucking... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? The fucking people for VHS are responsible for a... For a whole cryptid. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's pretty great. It's pretty amazing. Crash Course Cryptozoology made a video on L the Lone Pine Mountain Devil, revi revealing that it began as a YouTube video from about 12 years ago. Um, and therefore the... Yep. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> We're apparently not the first people to break this, but yeah, it seems like you're correct. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, a lot going on there. So our, our third and final of the Baja Beasts, um, or California cryptids, as it will, is the Wild Man of Borneo, more commonly known as Oofty Goofty. Oofty Goofty Borneo. Yeah, the Wild Man of Borneo, known as Oofty Goofty. An 1884 newspaper clipping advertises his presence my name. at the Standard Dime Museum. Um, oh, also, this is, um, I'm trying to recall back to the exact point of, of last podcast where I said, oh, we're going to have some of that in this next cup coming episode, the, like, ethno, um, just showing off foreign people. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 the, uh, um, uh, yeah, like, uh, what is it called? I, for, I, for, I, for, I, for, I don't remember. I, for, I forget. I but, but It doesn't matter. This, this is, is where the tie is. Uh, so an 1884 yeah. newspaper clipping advertises his, his uh, presence at the Standard Dime Museum, reading in part, Great success, a museum, not a sideshow. Latest arrival, the hairy wild man. And then it continues to list sideshow things, uh, including but not limited to the electric lady and the half lady. Um, Oofty, uh, should one attend a showing, was a hairy humanoid in a cage, covered head to toe in hair, uh, and the cage would have raw meat stuck in between the bars by an attendant and be eaten by Oofty Goofty. His name came from the fact that he apparently, um, could only say Oofty Goofty, and attendees were informed that Oofty could speak 21 languages, but understand none of them. It is at this I point, mean, I would ask you I to speculate this. at what you think Oofty Goofty is, if you're not already aware. I knew what it was the second that you said Borneo Wild Man, because then I, then I made sure, I'm like, isn't Borneo in, in uh, like, Southeast Asia? Yes, yeah. it is. Okay. Uh, oh, they're probably just taking a, a person from Southeast Asia who's kind of hairy and just, like, throwing him in a cage. Because that's what it fucking sounds like, Brandon. There's... You're close. Oofty was found to be a normal human because during a viewing, two Irishmen poked him with a stick and he yelled out something in English along the lines of, like, fuck! <laughs> they're not even, like, oh my god. <laughs> Oofty was I, actually... Although I, yeah. This is actually slightly better. Oh, it's though, so much better. This is better. This is better than the alternative because if they actually took someone from Southeast Asia, that would be way worse. Yeah, no, they didn't take someone from Southeast Asia. Oofty was actually a Berlin man named Leonard Borchart. <laughs> Oofty. <laughs> Leon came to America as a stowaway on the ship, who was eventually Wait. found into forced labor. What? How, how did he speak? Okay, how did they pitch that he spoke twenty-one languages if all he could say was "oofty goofty"? Is it "oofty goofty" no, his name no. in twenty-one languages? I I don't know. Apparently, there are twenty-one languages with the the word "oofty goofty," um, or with a word "oofty" and "goofty." Um, uh, okay. Leon came to America as a stowaway on a ship who was eventually found and forced into labor as a crew member to pay for his voyage. Now, apparently the voyage, uh, was two trips or it cost two trips because, um, the ship, the SS Frazia made it to the U S and he had to go all the way back to Germany and go all the way back to America a second time before he would be allowed to stay. He then joined okay. the U.S. Cavalry in Detroit. Uh, his unit was to be set against Native Americans in Washington when he decided to sell his rifle and horse and become a farmer and fuck off because he, quote, did not want to be scalped. He then went to California and worked at a circus, and from there he joined the Dime Museum. Leon is... What? <laughs> yep. Leon, it is important to point out, was not exceptionally hairy. He was smeared with tar and covered in horse hair. This ultimately was a bad idea because after one week, he fell ill because he was unable to perspire. Doctors had no success uh, for, for removing the tar and the hair, so they just uh, covered him in tar solvent and left him on a roof. What the fuck? <laughs> this is the best tur turn of events for any cryptid ever. Uh, what? But like, like, okay. 
Okay, I had to take the glasses off for a second cuz like Oh, there's I a lot coming at you. On this one. There's more. Oh my god, there's more. There's more about him. There's Holy more shit. Um primarily okay. from okay. a German uh, German site, um I found a very limited amount of information on Ufti Goofti in English. But then once you go to German, oh, there's a lot of information. Not so much on the wild man of Borneo stuff I was trying to like dig deeper into, but then you go, "Oh, this guy." <laughs> There's a lot to this guy. Um, he quit. Um, I don't know why. Um, and to make some extra cash. Yeah, it sounded like a good gig. He it falls, sounded like a good gig. Yeah. All he was doing was just not perspirating. Do you know how much money people pay to like get antiperspirant deodorant? A lot. And Isn't he was that just being given it. What they claim happened to um, that late, that girl from the James Bond movie who was like fully painted in gold. She's, well, I think she was yeah. like painted in gold latex paint and she couldn't sweat. And she yeah, that's in. that's the urban legend, but that's not true. Oh. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so, in order to make some quick cash, he falsely accused someone described as simple-minded of paying him for arson. This backfired as he was sentenced to three years of forced labor for defam- def- defamation. Leon, however, the strategist, mutilated his body until they released him. He would throw himself from cliffs after faking ep- epilepsy with no success. What? <laughs> Then, then this entrepreneur sent out to break a world record. In 1886, he decided to push a wheelbarrow from San Francisco to New York in fewer than 320 days. Oofty only, what? <laughs> Oofty only made it 36 kilometers, or uh, 22 miles, um, before he uh, scared a coach driver hauling a load of hay and sent him over a bridge into a river. He then sold his wheelbarrow. How did... Okay. (laughs) So I'm the coach driver. Okay. Holy shit! It's a dude pushing a wheelbarrow. Yeah. Dies. Like, what? Like, okay, I get that this is probably, like... What is this? Probably, like... I imagine it's, like... 1890-something? Around 1886. So... Was wheel like wheelbarrows weren't new technology in 1886? Yeah. So so here's so like here's a scenario I'd like to uh, 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 let me be a, a mind Picasso because I think this okay. is the 1886 version of like seeing a squirrel swerving and like hitting someone's mailbox. <laughs> but in 1886, there ain't no cars. You're driving a wagon. It's not that fast. But you know what's not new technology? Whiskey. And you know what you could probably drink a lot of and just <laughs> casually haul a wagon across a bridge? <laughs> Whiskey. My guess. <laughs> or <laughs> what the mind painting I'm setting up as a wagon driver who spent his whole life drinking whiskey and hauling stuff in a wagon never had any issues with strangers on bridges with strange objects. <laughs> he might have overcompensated a little bit. <laughs> But, like, so here's the thing, right? That's tricky. Because, like, you have, like, the horses. The horses, Brandon. Yeah, th- there's the horses would have to Brandon. overcome the urge to not jump off a bridge. Yeah, well, they'd have to, like... like. Unless it was something where, like, the oh. wagon wheel came off the side and it couldn't be helped. And but, the horses were trying like, to, like... I don't but, know. <laughs> Horses are actually pretty good when it comes to self-preservation stuff. Like, yeah, they're not gonna they're not gonna jump off a bridge because they see a dude with, with a, a wheelbarrow. wheelbarrow. Yeah, like what? What is the reality in which this? Like, I just really, really don't understand because like a horse and carriage can pretty much ride itself as long as the horse doesn't run. Yeah, right. Especially on like, a bridge. <laughs> yeah, like, it's pretty much autopilot. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like a self-driving car, but, like, the easiest way to be a self-driving car. Yeah. Because the horse will just walk to wherever the fuck it wants to go. Won't necessarily be where you want to go. It's not quite, it's not, that. that is the problem with that technology, is mm-hmm. it's not very good at going where you want to go. But, but... It'll get you there. Oh, it'll get and you. you. Can do whatever the. It'll get you somewhere at the very least, and you can do whatever the fuck you want while you're getting to that somewhere. So, yeah. 
So his his uh his world record attempt th- uh, thwarted. He then performed as a singer and dancer at Bottle Cohing's Barbary Coast Dance Hall. But he was thrown out into the street by a crowd who <laughs> beat him, the ever loving shit out of him. This is how he found out he could not feel pain. Wait, what? <laughs> How is that the moment that he finds out he can't feel? I pain? don't know because there's the whole self mutilation and cliff jumping thing from the top, but yeah, like what? Okay, and so okay. and so John, a star is born. Oofty was now Professor Hardness, the man who knew new pain. For I'll mere... show you a Professor Hardness. <laughs> Yo, for mere ten <laughs> cents, about three dollars today. You could punch him. For for twenty five cents, about seven dollars today, he could hit him with a walking stick. Uh and by the way, this had to hurt like hell. Uh because if it p- punched and punches they're fine or whatever. It just kinda cuts you off guard. Um Sticks fucking hurt. I used to get hit with sticks. I oh, used yeah. to sword fight with sticks. Like that's what you do as a boy oh, yeah, yeah. who has woods. You sword fight your friends yeah. with sticks and sticks hurt. Or you get or you get like a piece of like uh wood that like a scrap wood. Yeah. And then, like, you assemble a sword from that piece of scrap wood, and then you just beat the ever-loving shit out of stuff with it. Because, oh, yeah. you know... Yeah, and it's, then you have sword fights. It's the best. To this day, I've never had more fun than just beating shit with a stick as a child. It's oh, great. Oh, no. I had I had two, like, wooden swords. Yeah. That were, like, my outdoor wooden swords. I had my sword, my favorite sword. And then I had the guest sword, which was still pretty good, but, but it not was as the good. guest sword. <laughs> it was not my sword. My yep. sword was the sword. That was the shit. It was cool. It kind of like had like, it didn't have like a hilt. It had more like a, uh, like a, a lightsaber emitter style to yeah. it. I mean, it was not ergonomic because it was a literal like two by four style thing. Like, yeah, and not a two by four, obviously, but like a slimmer one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing lightsabers came around. But then lightsabers were their own problem. They were their own problem. Because uh, people hit way harder with lightsabers. Yeah, Rondout Class of 2009. We got officially uh, lightsabers put into the student handbook, man. Yeah, yeah. I actually got my lightsaber like just at the time that they banned them. Which kind of sucks. That And the other thing, like... The thing about lightsabers is you had to keep, like there's different grades of lightsaber and you had to find the kind with the thicker plastic telescoping material because if you got the thinner one and someone had one that was a bit stiffer than yours it just fold the, that that it would just fold well right yeah there, yeah increase. you don't you don't you only get the you'd only get the ones that had no like auto launch mechanism or yeah because like, like those are not as good for fighting yeah right. And then, uh, then the different hilts were different qualities, right? Yeah. So, like, um, I had a Yoda saber. That one was a nice saber. Or wait, no, was it Mace Windu? I think it was a Windu saber. That, that emitter, like the smooth ones. Oh, you've got a fucking Kylo Ren right there. I think I still have a lightsaber that lives in my car. Yeah, the Kylo Ren saber, by the way, I, it's very thick. Very thick, high quality. I don't like it. It's feel as much as some of the other ones, but well, it, the quality of plastic, very good. They've reduced the size, and the way that the mechanism works is different now too. Because you used yeah. to have a push button, and now it's it's auto flick. Yeah. We've now been talking. I don't know why we got to talking about lightsabers, but we are. And that's how it goes. And for fifty cents, more than thirteen dollars, you could beat him with a baseball bat. Sounds good. But how could we expand on this enterprise, you ask? We work as a baseball mascot. If the team won, Oofty Goofty got $20, over $540 today. And if they lost, the whole team got to beat him. What? Also, so I listened to a recent uh, dollop episode. Yeah. Late 1800s baseball was, oh, was fucking crazy. wild. Okay? So, like, like... Uh, the catcher was apparently the person who was like the real deal on the team yeah. back then. Like because of the way the rules worked, if you had a good catcher, you could win the game. If you had a bad catcher, you lost. Just that's yeah. it. Also, no protective equipment whatsoever. No masks, not even like a a chest plate, no gloves. 
nothing. The so all right. So the uh, 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 the Rube. If you want to listen to the craziest baseball dollop, the Rube is the one you want to listen to. He was just he was too dumb to be bad at baseball. Is is basically how it was. Um, he had a side job as a Woodward's uh, at Woodward's Garden. Uh, an amusement park, and if you hit him with a baseball, you won a cigar. His what? reputation as the man without pain was not all upside, however. In August of 1887, he got drunk and let a man hit him with a derrick pole, which, as I learned, what? is a crane. He let a man hit him with a crane. He contorted his face with an expression of the, quote, strongest horror, and to my amazement upon reading this, the open head had to be sewn. He cracked his head open. Oh. He then decided... Well, it was, I mean, if you yeah. get hit by a Derek, yeah, that's going to happen. Like, if you get hit by a metal object, yeah, and my guess, you're it probably going to need it to sew it shut. the swinging hook part. The big yeah. swinging hook part is what I'm guessing he got hit with. That's, and he okay. had to get his skull sewn. He then decided it was time for a career change, so he entered the ring with Big Bertha and other boxers, where he just got he just got knocked out, just knocked out. Big Bertha being marketed as someone who could neither sing nor dance, but apparently knock you the fuck out. She was also a wrestler, and his uh, whole gig was just that she knocks him out. Like what? His, like his job was just like see this chick, she big, ain't she? She gonna knock me unconscious. And that was his job. That was. His... She does. I will say this. She does look like she can f- throw a funkin punch. Oh yeah, she she looks like like, like there's no se- she doesn't say anything and give you a second chance. She just says what and then stands up and then you're on the floor. Like that's oh yeah, no, the... no, no, no. I would not. This this woman is not to be fucked with. Like if I saw someone like that and like <coughs> just like. She's a physically imposing looking person. Yeah. Like, and like her, I mean, it, it might be because of the time period of the photo, but she definitely also looks like she's no nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. I would not fuck like, with her. Uh, oh no, not in a, not in a heartbeat. And no. like, good on her for being like, for beating, being able to beat the shit out of people. Yeah. So he tried some stunts after that long walking races, performing as a clown, letting kids throw rocks at him. But long walking races? Yeah, I guess just l- walk at a, I, long. Uh, so at, at a certain... So here's my question. In a long walking race, is running cheating? I'd assume yes. There's speed walking races today, and I think it's similar rules probably. Like, I can't guarantee it, but I think they're, they're probably similar. Like, when does it become... When does it stop being speed walking and become running? I imagine there's, like, got to be limited arm movement... And maybe like, um, like your well, you like, could, it, it it can like it can never there can never be a point in time where only one foot is on the ground. I think that's a rule for modern day power walking um, races. You have to have a foot or on like, the ground. You mean, or you because you have to because 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 if if you if you have a foot bolt if you can never have a foot off the ground, you can't well, like, walk. If you're running, you only have one foot on the ground. So I think you. And if you're Every walking, step, you only have one. F- both feet have to be on the ground. Like, That's like super when, when unefic- the front, inefficient. When the front foot lands, the back foot still has to be on the ground. I think. I'm looking this up. I think I might. The, the, I remember there's something. It's it's a long time ago and an obscure thing that's hard to remember. But there's there are oddly uh, uh, detailed rules for like walking races. Um. And in eight, it, wait. Um, one foot must be in contact with the ground at all times. If a walker lifts or loses contact with the ground with both feet, as judged by the naked eye, he or she may be disqualified by a judge in a racing competition. So, you could just have one foot on the time. So, like, I've watched the characters from Naruto run, and like everything you're telling me sounds like a Naruto character could just run in a speed walking competition and technically be winning in terms of the rules. Okay, yes. All right, let's yeah. Let's not let's Uzumaki this up. <laughs> oh man. In uh oh in 1891, he peaked. Um he had world boxing champion John L. Sullivan, your namesake, 
uh, a notoriously Is heavy he? drinker. And for the 1800s, that's got to be fucking crazy. Yeah, like, so I, I want to point out that, like, beer drinking? Like, people had to learn that you could be an alcoholic drinking beer. Yeah. So, like, like, like in the, and that was, like, in the 80s. Yeah. People didn't realize that you could be an alcoholic drinking beer. So, like, 1800s, if you're considered a heavy drinker, you must be a fucking fish. It's got to be crazy. Like, it's, I yeah. can't even imagine what a heavy drinker for the 1800s looks like. And that's, like, eight, that's like 1800s hooch, too. Yeah. Right? Like, that's probably not... It's half methanol, probably. <laughs> so, anyway, the, the heavyweight championship boxer, John Sullivan, shows up to the San Francisco Variety Theater to smash a pool stick on him. Um, and that eventually led to baseball bats, which caused long-term damage and led to his eventual death. So he basically went the way of Houdini. He went the way of Houdini, but, like... Not really. Not really. Prior to his death, which I would argue is his own fault, something yeah. difficult for the 1800s, uh, he moved west and... Uh, he, he ate 100 quail for $100 to raise money for a hotel where he was staying uh, in front of hundreds of spectators. Ever the showman, he ate two extra quail eggs and then drank eight beers in six minutes while smoking a cigar. He, he was basically a geek. He then fasted for 30 days. Yeah. He was a, he was a sideshow geek. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, nothing is known about Oofty Goofty after 1909. Uh, other than that he was a gemstone dealer and received votes for district attorney. <laughs> and that is the story of the wild man of Borneo. So, like, I would... I'd, like... Listen. 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 Oof, oofty Goofty ain't afraid of anyone. Oofty Goofty ain't afraid. And he can't be bought, except he can totally be bought. Like a hundred percent. It's like his. It's his. It's his main characteristic. Like literally his main thing. Like he doesn't. He only does stuff for money. So actually, on second thought, he'd be a terrible DA. Oh yeah, a terrible one. A terrible DA. <laughs> hey, Oofty, do this thing or else we'll break your bones. I don't care. Hey, Oofty, do this thing and we'll give you ten cents. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's it's such like uh, like it. Although I guess I guess a lot of people will do stuff for money, but I feel like I feel like Oofty's a whole thing, and I don't really want to call him Leonard because I think Oofty's a funnier name. Oh yeah. Um, Oofty, Oofty, Oofty lived a life. Oofty lived a life. Oofty. Oofty had to be into some weird shit, too. He had to be like, yeah. break my finger. I can't come if you don't break my finger. He definitely he definitely had some kinks. There's yeah. no doubt about that. Without a question, he had yeah. kinks. Yeah. Oh, I just watched What We Do in the oh. Shadows for the first time. That was from some funny stuff. Uh, did you watch the TV show or the movie? TV show episode one and two, right before we recorded. It's pretty it's amazing. Pretty funny. It's pretty funny. It's got uh the it's got some people from like Snuffbox and stuff like that in it. Yep. So, uh what's his name? The the whiskey guy. Yeah. Uh, whiskey? I don't remember his name. I I love everything he's in. I he can has never a remember fantastic his voice. Yes. Uh um, The mustachioed man with a great voice. That's his name. Yeah. That that's not his name. It is his name. Is it? It is. Is it really? Yeah. Uh, Matt Barry. Ah, uh, we were both doing the same thing. Yeah, Matt Bar- Matt Barry, Richard Fulcher, and uh, Richard Iode are like three people who I always love to see in British stuff. Also, is he in um, what we do in the shadows? R- Richard uh, Iowate. No, I don't. I don't think Richard Iowate is in, uh, what we do in the shadows, but I could be wrong. He's so good. He is. Uh, is, um, is it called Travel Man? Watch his show Travel Man on YouTube. It's great. Let's see. Let's see what. Put it over there with the rest of the fire. <laughs> Did you? All right. So, 
I want to talk about. Oh, by the way, the episode's over. So if you guys want to fucking go, go. Oh yeah, we're done. Um, uh, so uh, have you ever seen Brandon? Have you ever seen the American IT Crowd episode that they produced? No. Wait, wait, with American okay. characters or they come to America? The American characters. No. So, okay, okay, okay. That sounds like blasphemy. So, okay. Here's here's who starred in it, right? Oh. Um, Jen, you know, the... the yeah. The, the, the normal, so to speak. Yeah. She's in a um, lot of stuff. There's only like she ten was, people but, that but act Brandon, in the UK. Brandon. Yeah. Jessica St. Clair played her. Um, Emily, who I don't remember who Emily was on the, in the IT crowd. Um, who was that? Might have been a character that they made for. Okay, I think it was something that they made for. Yeah, it's something they made for the. Um, the the pilot, uh, Denim was Rocky Carroll. Uh, Roy oh, no. was Joel McHale. Oh and no! And Brandon, who do you think Moss was? Oh no! Um, I guess is it Richard Iwate? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm cheating because I I'm on Wikipedia. <laughs> they had him on he the did. American one. Yes, John. As him, as his own, the same character, literally the same character. Let me share this with you if you don't already know. Did you know they made a German version of the IT crowd? No. There's a German version of the IT crowd. <laughs> it's shown in the Wikipedia under adaptions. There's American version and German version. They aired in the same year. Oh. I, I like the German. I like the German cannibal joke episode. That was pretty funny. Yeah, from the original IT crowd. Um, God, wow, they haven't done anything since 2013. No, eh, it really doesn't. It really doesn't need more though, because like what was there was pretty fucking great. It was amazing as is. I love the button. I love yeah. the bomb control episode where he's like, "What operating system is it?" And he's like, "Oh no." Close. <laughs> um, no, Noel Fielding. That was the name of the guy I was trying to remember. Yes, I I love him too. Um, he's uh, Mighty Boosh fame. Mighty Boosh, uh, Vince Noir, I yep. believe. Yeah, he was the vampire in the closet. Oh, Naboo's his brother. What? M- Naboo is Noel F- Noel Noel Fielding's brother. Naboo from the Mighty Boosh, the 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 shaman man. That's his is brother it? in real life. They yes. look nothing alike. No, not at all. They're two very different people. And then Julian Barrett is always really good too. Yeah. So. Um. Also, I want to say one last thing before we end the podcast this week. Yes. Did you know that there was a big fucking consp- there was a big fucking fallout that happened in the Neopets community recently? I didn't know there was a Neopets community. Please, sh- yeah. please share spill the tea. Okay, okay. So I just watched a uh, 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 a Polygon video about this. Okay, and apparently. So Neopets has gone through a few changes, right? Yeah. Um, the cow character was originally uh, Marcy something. Uh, it was a black woman. Yeah. And, like you could have a black you could have a black woman as a pet on Neopets, and a man as a pet, and a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So like, they did a once it switched to Viacom, they did a remake of like all the character designs, right? So, you know shit's going to happen when a sentence starts with when they switch to Viacom. Yeah. Um, But the thing is, there was a fuck ton of, like, content that was really difficult to get in the game. Okay. And that content revolved around, like, paintbrushes and pets and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, So... 
what happened was those pets weren't changed, right? Okay. But, but there was demand for those old styles, right? So oh. what ended up happening is like a very complicated and convoluted trade network for original style pets. Yeah. That sprung up over the years. Recently, someone's loop like that had a specific paint job was yeah. lost, was stolen. But what they had to do, what they wanted to do, what they had to do was basically go back and restore it to this person and like undo all the trades. Mhm. But the thing is, Brandon, it wasn't just like one or two people. It was like a huge chain of trades had to yeah. be undone because that's how quickly things move in the Neopets community. Yeah. And like, not only that, but they had to restore some of these pets, which meant that they could bring back the old versions of them. And they had been saying that they couldn't, which oh. made people furious. Yeah. And then, and then, recently, somebody uh, whistleblowed on the black market sites where you can buy Neopets. Yeah. For 50 to to $100. So on the black market sites that you could buy Neopets, it turns out they were exploiting the game itself to uh, hack in these original content ones that were born after 2007 and they were selling them to people for like a hundred some odd dollars. Yeah. So not only did the, the company have the ability to make these things, but hackers were making them the whole time. That's fantastic. (laughs) And it pissed people off. That's fantastic. So there's like a whole, it was a whole, there's like a 15 minute video about that on Polygon Jesus. right now. It's really, it's really, I had to watch it before the episode. That was what I was watching before the episode. Okay. So, I assumed it was something different um, when you said I'll log in in a few minutes. I was like, oh, he's on his jack top. No, I was, I was uh, watching donkey videos with Christina. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Donkey's um, good. Yeah. So that I'm going to do our plugs because we've gone way over. Um, so our website's cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Our Twitter is at cryptopediacast. Our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Um, we have a Patreon. And Brandon, do you want to give our, our Jackalopes a shout out? Yeah, we'll thank our Jackalopes. And that is Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider. Who he had, he had, he had, he had, he had, he had surgery to get I actual thought, wings. I like thought we were done wings. with that. I thought, We're not I thought done with that because he's getting actual okay. wings now. I thought it was okay. Non-functional. They're just what's it called when like you don't need a body vestigial? part? Vestigial. Vestigial. He's getting vestigial, vestigial wings. Jonathan Shepard that that and fuck Andrew Jackson. There's it's medically sound. Trust me. I don't. <laughs> uh, oh, I thought you were talking about fucking Andrew Jackson. It's probably not a good idea to fuck a pile of bones. No. Yeah. No. Um. We have a Facebook group, a Discord, where uh, generals become cursed, so there's that. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that stuff if you can. Share it with people, all that good stuff. If you have any monster requests, send them in. Uh, current outstanding list is Wendigo, which is pending me ever finding somebody who has uh, a cultural connection to the Wendigo. Because two white people talking about a monster that is literally the embodiment of white colonialism. It's us. Not not a great not a great look for us, personally. Um a little bit a little bit tone deaf. A little bit tone deaf. Mm. Very, very tone deaf, actually. Um and the second one is the Jersey Devil, which is our people. It, monster. Yes. Like explicitly our people. So I'm fine doing that. Okay. <laughs> we we know their names. Um, you can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. I mean, between the two of us, I think we might actually even be whiter than them. So 
I did a 23 in me, and, you know, I was like, oh, I might find something cool and interesting and new, and nope. Yeah, you were just you were just pure white. Yeah. I was like, you're, oh, You're shit. white as the driven snow, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. Um, <laughs> I'm not surprised. That, like, nobody, you and your si- nobody in my family Bra- trained once? Yeah, I'm not. You and your sister burn at the sight of the sun. Yeah, that's actually very true. Like... <laughs> Like, I, I've been with you both. We've gone to a marketplace. We spent most of the day in sto- inside, and you still get burnt. Yeah, yeah. Especially in the wintertime, because then you're getting hit in both directions, because it reflects out yeah, the snow. You, you, like, literally, you have a negative amount of melanin in your body. <laughs> <laughs> you, absorb, you absorb melanin from around you. And turn it into the void. Yeah. <laughs> um, on Instagram, I'm new twenty fifty seven. On Twitter, I'm JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. My email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Before we started, I was talking about computer woes. Um, Because the laptop that I'm recording this on right now is giving me some issues. Uh, I'm having some, like slowdowns and like it's hard to like access things and what have you and this is a relatively new laptop it's only a year old um but (laughs) my laptop isn't the thing that has real problems in my life right now computer wise because this i'm pretty sure is discord causing the problem um my personal computer my main computer my daily driver the one i play video games on the one i work on projects on the one i write on all that stuff that one has a hard drive that is 10 years old. So it's a 10 year old SSD drive. Um, it's not, it's, it's like critical or something like that. It's not a main brand, right? It's not Western digital. It's not Seagate. It's not, um, anything along those lines. Uh, it's not WD. It's like a, when SSDs were new, it was something that I bought to speed up my boot times. It's now become my operating system one. But you see, here's the problem, Brandon. Windows increases in size as its lifespan continues. There's a lot of applications that will only install onto the C drive, right? I want you to take a guess as to how large my ten my my ten year old hard drive is it's a hundred gigs because because ssds were expensive turns out once you reach a certain level of capacity on your c drive windows just stops updating properly it blue screens of death every time it boots for the first time and i have to restart i have to restart the computer so basically now Now it's reached the point where I'm like, okay, uh, gonna go turn the computer on. I'm gonna go walk away, do some stuff. And then the blue screen comes on and then it just resets itself. I'm like, okay, cool. Now I can actually start doing stuff like 10 minutes later.